At this point, I want to put together two things you understand individually, but together might hurt your head a little bit. Previously, we looked at how the order of modifiers matter, how having a background blue, then a frame, is different from having a frame, then a background. As you can see, what's happening is, if we have frame first, then background, we expand the frame, then color the frame and the text. If we have background first, then the frame, we color the text, then expand the frame without coloring it. This matters. That's concept one. Modifier order matters because SwiftUI wraps these views with modifiers again and again and again as they're being applied. Concept two is that we can apply an animation modifier to a view in order to have it implicitly animate changes. So for example, we could say, let's add uh, some state up here so it shows different colors depending on some state. So I'll say, uh, at state private var enabled is false. And now when the button's pressed, I'm gonna to toggle that Boolean between true and false, true and false, true and false. So I'll do enabled dot toggle. And now I'll use a conditional uh, color down here. Background, if enabled is true, then blue, otherwise red. And finally, we'll add an animation modifier to this button here, so these changes animate. I'll say, use an animation of default value attached to enabled. Now, if you run the code, you will see tapping the button makes the whole thing change color smoothly, like that. Very nice. And this will make sense. We have implicit animations happening here, boom, and we have the modifier order mattering. Right. Brace yourself, this one might hurt. You can attach the animation modifier several times and the order you use it matters. To demonstrate this, we add a modifier after all the other modifiers, after the animation. I'm gonna say, apply a clip shape of dot rect with a corner radius, if we're enabled, of 60, otherwise zero. So we're saying, move between a square and around the rectangle, depending on the value of the enabled but boolean. And now press Command R to run the program again. What you see is the color change happens in, uh, with a nice effective animation, but the rounding jumps immediately between square and rounded as the color change moves the animation. Hopefully you can see where I'm going next. <laughs> if we take this clip shape modifier and move it before the animation and run the code again, now that will be animated too. We get gentle corner rounding, as you'd expect. So we have a background color and corner rounding both being animated. So the order in which we apply animations matter. Only changes before the animation modifier get animated. Now for the fun part. If we apply multiple animation modifiers, each one controls everything before it up to the next animation modifier. This allows us to create, animate all sorts of state changes in various ways rather than uniformly for every property. For example, we could make the color change happen with a default animation, but it needs a spring for the clip shape. So we'd say something like this. Let's, let's say that we have uh, an animation uh, for the first lot, frame, backgrounds, foreground, animation, da, da, da. but then clip shape, and then we'll animate that separately. I'll do a spring with duration one, bounce 0.6, so quite bouncy, with a value of enabled. So this animation modifier here controls uh, these modifiers, really just background actually changing, but this animation modifier controls just that clip shape. Let's press Command R again. We get this. You see the rounding effect there? If we increase the bounces, make it really bouncy, you'll see exactly what I mean here. Let's try a bounce of 0.9. Boom. There we go. So that carries on bouncing around the rounded corners smoothly, even though the color change in the background happens with that original uh, default animation, a simple built-in bounce. There you go. 
You can have as many of these animation modifiers as you want. So you can split one state change into as many segments as you need. With even more control, it's possible to disable animation entirely by passing nil to the modifier. For example, you might want the color change to happen immediately, but the clip shape to retain its animation. In which case, you'd say something like this. This animation here, the one attached to uh, well, modifying the background in this case, I'm gonna say, give me a nil animation here. Do not animate everything above here. But this one, the clip shape, that is animated. Let's try Command R. You'll see the background changes color immediately, but the rounded corners do continue springing around. And this kind of fine grain control would not be possible without multiple of these animation modifiers. If you try to move this background here after the animation, like down here, it would just undo the work of the clip shape because now you clip it and then fill it again with the original color, you'd lose the clip shape entirely. So having multiple animation modifiers really helps.